younger set in, in those days, and uh, they, they were both very warm and welcoming and supportive, and um, you can talk about Chris. Roddy was a, a really generous, giving, available, accessible, fun guy who, like us, had started out very young in the business and had uh, grown and matured. And, uh, you were nine when we made friends. I was not <laughs> to come to America and Come on up to the microphone if you want to talk about Step Fred right Knight. up. Fred Come Knight. on. Right Who's going to be brave? Or well, just keep right, talking and then you'll be like, well, somebody <laughs> 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 Step up. 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 Step Oh, in a nutshell. Okay. Some <laughs> all <laughs> ten years. Some of ten years. No, I mean seriously though. When you are with a company of players, and we had the great good fortune of a lot of crew people who were with us throughout the entire ten-year run, and that's a long time, especially in Hollywood land. But think about it. When you're in school and you go through grade one to ten, or you know, you, you change, and people are different year after year. And so things did change, um, but for the most part, we were there sort of in a way feeling like, are we, and you were part of early Fox years. Is this for real? Is this network for real? Because there, they said there would never be a fourth network. Because in the US, it was ABC, CBS, and NBC. So when Fox came along in the early days of cable television, we were all just like, what are we doing? Is this really? Are these checks going to clear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, truly. Yeah. But it was also, there was something sort of loose and fun with that energy about, well, because we could fail. Because the stakes in Hollywood are so high that you've got to make a, a, a landing, a strong landing quickly. And there's always sort of that tension and that pressure that goes with that. But with, with the new network, it was sort of like, well, they don't have a high expectation of us, so we could just play. Yeah, the the, current, the, the, the currency for Fox uh, at, at that point was, we're just going to do something different. Because these other three guys have been doing the same thing for years and years and years. So we're going to do Tracy Hillman. We're going to do The Simpsons. We're going to do you know, outside of the Fox stuff. So, uh, so but yeah, on the set of Mary, we were trying to make people laugh. This was a show that had never there had never been anything quite like it. And this uh, this Most families it. were more like the Bundys and the, <laughs> the neighbors, yeah. Right. Was. And they, they the original concept was the anti Cosby. Yeah. And that was when that show and, and it was very popular in the US and it was all this happy, friendly 
how nice to each other kind of family. Respectful. The there you go. Respectful. And there wasn't anything respectful. <laughs> no. no. Um, but, um, and I think because when I got behind the camera, I love crew, I love the theater. So when I think of Married with Children, I don't think just of the cast. I think of the whole company of people that were involved. Because there's easily 100 plus folks that make that show happen every week. So it was often fun, and it's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong; it's a it's a bit of it's a bit of a job to do, but I was thrilled to do it. Last question. Yes. Uh, which was your favorite season and/or episode filming Married with Children? Wow. Um, and as you can tell, I don't I don't talk in a straight line. I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm not succinct. Um, Gosh, it's a hard one. Attention all cape personnel, go with Batman. Okay, is that for me? Is that for me? I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the shorts. <laughs> you want to know. Um, uh, well, I'll always remember the first show I directed. It wasn't necessarily that magnificent of a show. Um, and then I got to direct a lot of episodes that featured Christina Applegate. She and I love working with one another. And um, I do remember filming the, um, the pirate episode when, when David Garrison would come back, Steve, my first husband. It was always fun to have him back. And so the pirate episode, they were really making fun of him because David was a Broadway guy and David did Pirates of Penzance. And so that's why they were trying to humiliate him in their beloved way. Um, but that was pretty fun to shoot a show on a pirate show. So I have to say that that might have been one of my favorites. And I'm just gonna say that I've always loved Married with Children. I and Lisa. I was about five years old when it uh, aired, but it was bath time, Married with Children, then bedtime. <laughs> wow. Any nightmares in there at all? No, no. Okay, no. okay. okay good. And that's why, by the way, Lisa, that's bedtime why, right that's after why Herman's Head's rating dropped after Married with Children because all the moms went and put their kids to bed. Were you on at 9.30? Sorry. And just before we get to the question, I wanted to just follow up with Herman's Head in the early days of Fox and then in the early 90s. Do you have the same kind of sense that you were just like we're just doing something different here, trying to trying to figure it out as you went along. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you would you, you would tell in my situation, you would tell people what Herman's head was about, and they're like, what? What is it? So, is a guy opens his head or whatever? So, yeah. But yeah, and but people really likewise. People Attention really respond. Code no. yeah. Batman, all clear. <laughs> okay, we can all let's all collectively heave a sigh of relief. You're welcome. We're all welcome. <laughs> okay. You know, he was gone for a minute. I don't know. Who yeah, yeah. Know. I'm double this year. Uh, John. Yeah. Hi guys. I was just wondering. Um, well, for, uh, directly that both, um, whether it be Roddy or Chris or Andon or anybody that. When you both like, kind because of, you were relatively young, you started then. Was there any uh, advice that they gave you uh, that you kept and you know that you used you yourselves? Don't I learned by episodes? watching. I don't know that I was actually ever, unless I asked. I don't know that it was offered. No, us. there was there a teaching going on. Right, I but I always learned by watching others, and not just the work, you know, the acting itself, but the the demeanor on set. Um, and I I was taught professionalism doing theater, starting young, and I always respected that, and and especially to yeah. Roddy and Chris who embodied that. Uh, and it's it's admirable, and it's not always it's not always there, yeah. and especially now. And um, that was really really void of any kind of ego at all, even from Roddy. You know, he was friends with some of the famous people around. Yeah, so it was. I didn't encounter that kind of thing until later. But yeah, so it was a great introduction. You know, really super. Well, and it's often it's often the folks that really aren't deserved of that kind of um, respect that are the most disrespectful. Uh, yeah, 
Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Go ahead. Hello. I was a big fan of Married with Children since I first saw it when I was in Florida on vacation. I've always wondered if you guys stuck to script or if you ever improvised on scenes. Yeah. Because it looked wild and I, and I just was like into it so much from the first time I saw it. Well, and I think that's sort of the, the, the sort of free-falling aspect of it. It was scripted. We were not improvisational actors. Now, having shot six seasons of Mad TV, and the, a lot of those players came from um, uh, the ground leads and, and, uh, and, and yeah, improvisational backgrounds. Mary was fully scripted. Um, if you got stuck in something and it wasn't working, most sets will, and directors and writers, staffs will they're open to a little bit of of, um, of just riffing if you will to try and figure out the best way to say something but if the writing's really good right you don't need to mess with it and you can always tell if a script have you did you experience this when it was hard to memorize yeah, yeah. That it, it really it usually meant this writing is not it's a as problem. yeah it's not as up to par because like the, the the words the lines just wouldn't stick. That's a good question. No, we were not. Were you improvising? No, the the, the writers would sometimes improvise because sure. we would we would shoot uh, on Herman's head. We would shoot uh, a scene, and if there's uh, was a joke that they thought was going to really be funny and kill, and it didn't, they would uh, they would get together there on the spot and say, come up with another joke. And then we'd reshoot the thing with that new joke in it. Oh, that happened a lot, yeah. actually. Oh, cool. Because and, and because they want to land the jokes. And they don't know until they're in front of a really, truly live studio audience. And I directed enough episodes that some of these series were kind of train wrecks. And <laughs> there was one in particular that we rewrote half the show during the taping. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so not only did I have to Reblock and tell the actors where to go. I had to tell all the cameras where to go again because the whole thing has changed. It didn't help it. <laughs> it didn't help it become a better show because it really does begin on the page, don't you think? Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Sure. Did you guys, when uh, you were shooting uh, both the Herman's Head and Mary with Children, did you have issues with censors uh, with some of the jokes and stuff? Uh, how was that on set? If you guys were working on it and something comes up, don't you can't do that. Well, so that usually goes through the the showrunners that create the producers, and it trickles down. And um, and again, I think we got away with a lot on Fox. Mary Mitchell was not going to be sold to ABC, CBS, or NBC. That show never would have made it on the air were it not this little renegade uh, network. And so, but even then. Uh, they had to sort of sit on um, the creator's hands sometimes and say, nah, nah, nah. What about you? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, the, the incident that comes to mind for me was, it's a learning moment for me, was that I had said we were sort of kind of uh, improvising a little bit. And uh, Hank Azaria had done something very strange and had played my friend Jay in her head. Uh, had done something strange, and I just sort of did this, you know, WTF look at him, and then finally said, you know, you're you're you're, you're scaring the crap out of me. <laughs> and uh, the censor said, you can't say you can say crap, but you can't say it as a substantive noun. You can say it like um, uh, that's well, well, we have, that's you couldn't say there's that's a load of crap. But you could say something, or scaring the crap. But you could say something like, "I don't give a crap." <laughs> so it was, and she, we went over and over, and I'm like, it up yeah. as we went <laughs> yeah, "And I was like, really? So how, how do you know?" And, and in the meantime, uh, Mary, uh, 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 Living Color was doing, you know, Handyman and all these yeah. these things that I was like, "Wow, are you really going to get away with that?" And uh, so, yeah, yeah censorship. Yeah. Odd. And you can also do things before nine o'clock, or after nine o'clock that you can't do before nine o'clock. Because people take naps. You 
feel I feel like I'm on the Mary with Children train right now. I feel like everyone's <laughs> asking those questions. But when you mentioned a few moments ago about how you were a director, I do know the later seasons you directed a lot of those episodes. And obviously, as everyone knows, Mary with Children is kind of like an anti-wife, anti woman yeah. when you received any of those scripts for were you ever like I there is no way in hell I'm standing behind a camera and filming this and of course other than the bad parts what was the experience of filming probably one of the biggest sitcoms to ever touch television well um I have to say I didn't moan <laughs> <laughs> um and that was even before I was directing because there there were some things that Again, it was a universally offensive show. <laughs> I mean, everybody got made fun of. So that's sort of how they got away with it. But, um, and the mean spiritedness. There were some things that I, it was hard for me. And I would also say, well, at least I don't have to say that. Um, but, but, yeah, yeah, somebody else has to say that line. Because it's our job as an actor to make it work, right? These people have written it. Um, and again, I knew what show I was on. Okay, um, I wasn't on Cheers, okay? Did I get those residuals? But anyway, um, and there were some times, but it's sort of like I knew what show I was on, so I wasn't going to try and reinvent the wheel. There were some moments on the set that I stepped in, truly, and said, um, and it had more to do with, you know, we had a very, um, that's the word, uh, larger than life, um, extra cast sometimes, like in the nudie bar and things like that. And sometimes these folks, uh, I can see their discomfort. And so I, I did step in and, and on some moments and to try and, uh, make things a little more um, safe and uh, easier. Yeah. Um, Thank you for answering the question. Sure, sure, sure. What was your second question? Was second oh, it was pretty much just like, aside from the negative stuff, like what was it like just for directing that show? Well, we didn't know it was going to have, just like Friday night, we didn't know when we were making it, we had a good time, but we didn't know that it was going to have this incredible longevity. And the most important thing that you can do, especially in comedy, is have a good time. If you're not having a good time, the audience isn't going to. So if you're having fun, chances are that's going to translate, right, from the screen. And married with children, we would crack ourselves up a lot. Uh, I think I was sharing with someone that we did an episode where Katie and Chrissy and I could not stop laughing. It was that sort of like bad kids in church kind of thing where we just, and we're rolling, and then one of us would crack it. And so we were having that kind of that kind of fun. We didn't know that it was going to end up being a rather cult classic, like like Fright Night. So um, I was again, I was just happy to be asked to the party. I remember when you when you got that. I we had the same agent at, at one point, and I had gone in to visit them, and, and I said, "How's it how's it going with with the management?" And they said, "Well." Got a pilot, you know. We don't know what's going to happen with it. We're, we're, you know, waiting to hear what's it's going to be. You know, it's going to get picked up. And all, you know, it's like okay, well, keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> well, and again, it was Fox, and we made fun of Fox on Very Good Tour because, right. like, is anybody watching? Is there right is there, there anyone out there? <laughs> because when it started, Katie Segal and I went on a national tour. I guess on the actors. Can you find your Fox channel? Because it was like in the US Channel 23, 42, it was just this obscure thing because it was in syndication. UHF, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, and again, you don't get picked up. It wasn't like a Friends that was just an undeniable hit. It's like year after year, are we going to get another shot at it? Oh, we did. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, I want to ask about uh, Friday Night 2. All right, I'm leaving. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's what I want to ask Amanda about. Like, were you asked to be in that movie, or were, were you on Married with Children at that point? And you're like, no, I'm. All right, I don't busy. know. Did I make it up that there was another script? You, you've been consistent. I know. Yeah. I thought it had just been Roddy a fantasy. Was on it, so. Originally, I thought we had a read, a read of another script, 
that Amy was in. Okay. Could have made it up. But um, once they landed on the female lead, that the that the, the the vampire was going to be a female antagonist slash love interest, whatever. Right, right. You know, a, there just wasn't a place. Well, yeah, I was so going to be married. Right now. Too. Like he had a different girlfriend in that movie, so I just wondered if that yeah. was just written out. I mean, I think he mentioned your name in the movie, maybe at, at some point. Did you, did you I think you mentioned. No. No. Yeah. But, you can see I'm not terribly familiar. <laughs> um, no, I mean it just it, it was okay. great for Billy. I think Stephen Jeffries did a film called Nine Seven Six Evil, which was sort of a, his sequel for Evil Ed. Um, yeah, I was making Marion at the time, yeah. but I would have loved Did you have it by then? Did you have Marion by then? When did you make well, it? Well, I think it's right about 89, I think. Yeah, we, we, we were, we shot the pilot Mary with Children in 86. Yeah, so yeah. You were, you were yeah. But I mean, it could have happened. You just didn't ask me to that point. Okay. I think it was a matter of, they, I think it was ultimately just a matter of they wanted to achieve this movie right. good, and so everybody was working on it. The actual release, I'm not sure it was, but I seem to remember it more being almost straight to video that, that part too, right? Like it wasn't as popular as the first one, I don't think, right? Well, remember? because the guy in charge of it, uh, Jose Mendez, uh, was the Mendez brothers' okay. father, so he got uh, right. terminated. <laughs> yeah. that, that Did that up, happen right? during? Just before. Yeah. Yeah. Right before the release? Do y'all know this story? Yeah. It's a horrible, let me just bring it up. <laughs> let me talk about it. No, it was actually a, just a horrible, tragic murder in Beverly Hills of a, of a, a financier producer. Yes, yeah. The Menendez brothers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so my question is actually for William. What was it like being on the set of Brothers King? A brother's keeper question. Um, that was a TV show. I did. Um, it was uh, it was great. We had a great time. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was um, uh, Jamie Widows and uh, who who was the sort of I guess showrunner and Donald Todd was a the writer and it was me and Sean O'Brien and it was basically um, basically it was two mad men if you will two mad men and. Uh, it was great. We had, a, we had a fun, you know, sort of an odd couple-ish, you know, so we got to sort of play these two different flavors that were uh, com competing and all that stuff. They were brothers, so. And uh, we actually had uh, Tony Randall and uh, Jack Bugman on an episode. The original TV on came on and did an episode. And, uh, yeah, so it was good. It was fun. They, I was on the Universal lot, and I could hear the Universal tram going by, the tour tram going by. There's William Bradley. You know, trying to say my name. I don't know if that's a high point. Okay. And you would run out and land on the Universal lot. Yeah. 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 And I was, oh, hey, I didn't hear you going by. <laughs> but, uh, was great. It was fun. Is it surreal? To do what you guys do. I mean, here we are. We're Weird. in rural Ontario. There's not much going on. We went, we had a movie come through last uh, summer uh, that was a uh, uh, one of the, um, uh, it was a Christmas movie for uh, Hallmark or whatever. Right. Like. So we don't get a lot of that. But you know, you guys are in Los Angeles. You're in movie world. Is it surreal to you, or is it is it? I well, the industry is. I mean, Los Angeles is the industry kind yeah. of thing. New York is a little different, and the industry on has has had a real regentrification there in terms of in New York it was mostly Broadway, off Broadway, soap operas, that kind of thing, um, and that's where still William is located now. Um, uh, Hollywood Land is all about that, so you're kind of saturated with it. But come on, it's a little it's a little strange way to make a living. It is, and there are moments where you're just like. This is what I'm doing today. I'm just yelling at something that I can't see um, on camera or reacting to, you know. And yeah, because you, as an actor especially, you're in your imagination. And it, that's that's your job. But when you, you step outside of it, it's kind of like, this is kind of weird. But the, the, the media is the thing that makes it so uh, surreal. Yeah. Because you, 
you meet people, actors, they're just people, you know, they're people you do a show with or whatever. But, uh, you know, at, at some point, a media event can happen. Jennifer Aniston played my sister on Herman's Head a couple of times, you know, and we got along great. It was a nice, fun thing. And a few years later, you know, I had to go through her security system to, to say hi, you know, a lot. But I once sat in a, uh, in a in a waiting room for an audition with Adam West, you know, and and we're like You're across from each other, the original Batman. Yeah, and I'm sitting across from him, and they're they're making him wait, you know, you know, because they have other people in front of him. I'm saying, what's it take, man? <laughs> Come on. But he was he was totally cool about it. But yeah, you know, it's like people that you're used to, you know, that you see on, you, you, you meet on one level of that media sort of thing, and then, you know, they're just regular people. Yeah. Most of them. And then they, and then some of them start to believe it, and it's like, oh, okay. Anybody you need? Jared. I have a couple questions. First for Amanda, do you think American children can get made today in today's sort of cancer culture climate? No. No, it couldn't. It really couldn't. They were talking, you know, with all these reboots that were happening, uh, uh, bringing the show back with uh, David Faustino, played Bud, because he was actually, by that time, which was a few years ago, Ed O'Neill's age, Al Bundy's age. So it kind of made sense that he'd still be on that sofa in that same living room, you know, married with grandchildren kind of thing. But it would not, it would not fly. I mean, even in the 80s, when a lot of stuff was they were getting away with, it was provocative. It was, um, and a lot of people didn't watch it for that reason. They were offended. Um, a lot of people watched it because they were offended. <laughs> but um, no, I don't think Guilty. so. I really don't. And if, if David's show had gone, it would not have been, I don't think, quite as edgy. It yeah. couldn't have been. And unfortunately, it didn't happen. I wish it had for him. Yeah. Um, but, um, one of the creators of the show passed away, and his his estate is very legally complicated. So I think that's what I heard at least why it didn't move forward. And for William, I wanted to ask, what was your memory of working on Mannequin Two? Mannequin Two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I was fan for Swanson. Not too yeah. much lately. Yeah. Yeah. For political place, I'm kind of like, eh, you know. She, yeah. Well, she's just some really dumb things. I'm like, wow. She's so adorable. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm so, I, I am a fan still. Yeah. Except some political things. I'm just like, I just sort of have to separate them. Yeah. She's, she's there sometimes. It was, it was fine. It was great. Um, you know, it was, it was uh, sort of like uh, Fright Night Two. The, the original thing had already been done, so you're just sort of stepping into the, 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 the footpath and the path that's already been trod, and so it was. It was, it was easy. Christy was great and charming, and uh, Mishak Taylor, who played Hollywood Montrose, was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, it, was, it was good. They didn't ask me to be in that one. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I remember you to do was, Rod Reber said that Christy's first trip was, when she comes to like, control, she said, oh, here I am, blah, blah, blah. Like, but she shouldn't know how, she shouldn't know that anything, like, stereo, that she's from Egypt. It's like when they, they fixed that. So Chris wanted to ask me, and she'd ask me, what is this, what is this, what are we doing? She asked me to kind of fix that, so I was wondering if they took a different Rod Hubert's review of the first one. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it was fun. Yeah, those kinds of stories are always fun. You know, when you have a character who's just discovering all this stuff that we're very yeah. familiar with, you sort of see it in a fresh, like, you know, what is this? I think I, I think Aaron had a theater of uh, a cheese steak or something, a Philly cheese yeah. steak, and it's like, what is it? And then you describe it, and you go, God, why would it? But this <laughs> and my last question was, do you guys have any souvenirs from Fright Night or Remember Children or any of the movies? Have you given anything? So, for whatever talk. reason, um, I wasn't smart enough to keep any of my fangs or anything, because those were cool. I, somehow I ended up with my breasts because um, at the time my natural <laughs> um, I wasn't very endowed and then when I was bitten by the vampire Tom decided my hair would turn red and I would grow breasts 
So these guys had to slap plaster on me in order to make them. And they ended up like these foam in a candy box on my closet shelf for whatever reason for a long time. And then lo and behold, these conventions, this universe really starts popping up because initially it was Star Trek. You know, the Trekkies were the diehard fans and they would gather, but then it was the horror fans that sort of put the convention world on the map. And we came, I had not seen 20 years yeah, maybe. Yeah. We hadn't seen each other, the cast. So it was really fun. And I brought out those breasts <laughs> and I auctioned them off for something. Why I was ready to leave, just, I was ready to just hand it over to someone. The next generation. <laughs> yeah. And the guy at the bottom, Anyway, we have fun with those now. And, um, <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything uh, from? I didn't keep anything. I kept my wardrobe, and that was about it. But I didn't, I mean, I'm not going to keep it with the steak. I didn't, th I didn't think. <laughs> I didn't think, oh, 30 years from now, yeah. I would really want this yeah. wooden stick. We were smart enough. Well, I didn't, there was no indication that it was going to be, have the life that it's had. So, uh, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't really keep it for anything. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I had, uh, a question to throw at you guys, and that was, is there any um, projects out there, uh, movie wise or television, that, you know, whether it was in front of the camera or behind the camera, that you didn't? Get the opportunity, opportunity to do that you would have liked to. That's oh, yeah, really. Um, like, say you were up for it, and then up somebody else got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually was offered a part on a film that was a it was a project that was important to me because it was written by a man named Horton Foote, who wrote the screenplay for To Kill a Mockingbird, mm -hmm. and this was this was sort of like an actor's project, an independent film where I was flown to New York to, to read with the director. He offered me the part. And on my flight back, I lost it because by the time I landed, the um, I guess the, the production company of the film knew that he had chosen me and they said, we need a bigger name. And, um, uh, and my agency, which was a very big agency, at the time said, okay, who do you want? Because they just, it didn't matter to them. And um, so that that was a tough pill to swallow. You look at these things though, that they change the course of your career. And I do think that if I had gotten that particular film, it's a small film, but kind of an, act, an important film, um, I would have had a different career, probably more in film. And then I, instead of um, really spending most of my time in television, which Back then, it was sort of looked at as two different, and film was the elite, and television was a little, but I was thrilled to just work. Yeah. And um, so, and then that sort of evened itself out, and now it's just about where the good writing is and just being able to do the, do the work. What about you? Just, 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 I think it's listed on my IMDb. But, um, <laughs> I, uh, I think it is. I is was, it really? Yeah, yeah. I was All up for Ferris that? Bueller. I was up for Ferris Bueller and Project oh, X yes. and uh, Name of the Rose and uh, I mean everybody, everybody. Yeah. Uh, Iron Eagle. All the Matthew stuff. Broderick. Uh, anything Matthew Broderick was <laughs> yeah. in fact. Ah, oh, he got another one. Ah. Yeah. And, it was uh, Broadway. Well, and Phil it was on Broadway with the Neil Simon. Oh, so. Uh, but I was technically uh, committed to Herman's head because when you when they cancel a show, they don't just cancel it after you're done. They want to wait till the upfront. They want to wait till May, you know, till till the last minute to to announce that you you're not going to be coming back. And that was the spring that they made Friends. I think. And uh, and I had seen that and people had said, oh, this would be a great thing to do. And I was like, so I'm under contract still. I, just couldn't, I couldn't audition for it. So, uh, so that may have happened or may not. But people would be, might be just going, David Schwimmer who? Yeah, yeah David Schwimmer. <laughs> that guy? That was terrible. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's tons of things that John's been saying that. But, uh, you know, I have a friend, uh, a guy named Jeff Yeager, who is an actor. And um, you may know that he was the, he 
was cast and was the original star of 21 Jump Street. And they had done the pilot and uh, they were getting ready to, to go to series and uh, 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 Diller, what's his name? Uh, Barry Diller. Barry Diller said, no, I'm gonna do something about the lead. So they got rid of Jeff and they brought in new Johnny Depp. Now starring in court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm drama. Riveted. Has anybody watched? Do you get any? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mine, yeah. Have you seen any of it? No. <laughs> it's none of my business. <laughs> it's none of your business. <laughs> I mean, I, Do you think he's guilty? I think they're both gambling. Yeah. It was a very dysfunctional and destructive and Fair a lot of substance abuse on both parts. Nothing was good. No. Why he wants to why he chose to, it's his choice to counter sue or what, knowing that this information was going to come forward. That to me is the, the craziest thing. Uh, and, and all that, just you know, put a cap on it, just all that's, that co that's coming out, and to know that, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean was just, you know, a moneymaker for him, and now he can't even put on the cap to go to hospitals anymore, do that kind of stuff, right? To just allow that, it's, it's just, amazing to, to think that they're going through that. Well, and it, unfortunately what I've learned is that the level of substance abuse is yeah. fierce. And there's... Very rare for anything good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's unfortunate. Um, was Craig on back? Yeah. Well, okay. I was going to say something from back there, but I don't know if I get my turn again. So, <laughs> uh, Was Friday night a long shoot? And the other question is, um, was it all on a soundstage? Because I know a lot of it looked like it was on a soundstage, or is there anything on location for that movie? Because it looked like, like even the neighborhood where you, your house was, I don't look like it was kind of a soundstage. The right? back lot. Yeah, the back lot. The back lot. Okay. It's no longer there. Okay. So, so okay. that house, Jerry Damage's house, and Charles Richard's house next okay. door, they're gone. Too bad. Because that, especially the Jerry, and these were exteriors only. I mean, you'd open a door and there's nothing there. Right. Um, right. Shelves. And then, we shot on location um, at the for the nightclub. Okay. And yeah. on the street when we were running oh, yeah, and being great. chased on the street. Yeah, the, the whole first part of the of the shoot, the first three or four weeks was all exterior stuff. So yeah, so that was around town and, and part of it on the lot and stuff like that. And it was a rather long shoot. It was three months okay. ish. Good. And we had two weeks of rehearsal time, which was quite a luxury. Yeah. And I and I had the uh, when we first moved into the, the studio, pretty early on, I broke my foot during one of the takes. Attention getting me. <laughs> me, 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 me. Uh, but, and I was, I was really concerned about the replacement, because it was, you know, because I was hobbling and stuff. And I think someone had said, don't worry, it would cost them a fortune to redo all that location stuff, so you're fine. Yeah. And so, in that sense, it's good. Nice, thank you. Got it done. Uh, is that typical for a movie or shoot is three months, four no. months? No. No? No. It, it, well, it depends on how. For a smaller picture, that was, even though it was a major studio, Columbia, um, it, it was not considered a big picture. Um, most horror films in that day especially were not. Um, you know, and bigger pictures, of course, now are the Marvels and the, the just the, just the franchises and so forth. Um, but your an average shoot um, on a moderate budget is is more around like a month or forty five days, depends on the film, really. Yeah, depends on the film. And but the, in those days too, it was uh, you know now all the departments are going at the same time, so they you shoot a scene, it's already gone to the editor. Right, because it's all visual now. Yeah. But in you know, in those days, you had to you shot it, you hoped it was okay, you hoped there was no hair in the gate or the yeah. thing. You would see the dailies the next day, or somebody would, you know, and they would then they would choose, and then it would go to the other. So it's a much longer process. And uh, but uh, yeah, it was. I had when I broke my foot, I that the insurance money from that because they had the production was insured bought us time. So they could actually slow down production to to take a little more time with it. So I didn't know that. And I. Um, well, and thanks then, for doing that. Well, my pleasure. Anytime. <laughs>
And I, I had never, a trooper. I had never <laughs> shot a big movie like that before. So the doctor, the, the, the diatist or whatever, had at some point when I was talking to him said, so it's, uh, so this is really slowing stuff down. So I said, I don't, I mean, I'm an actor. I'm just waiting most of the day for them to set up stuff. I said, I don't, it doesn't seem like it to me, but you know, maybe I'm wrong. So he told the insurance company that I said that I wasn't slowing us down that much. So then they got into this big tiff, of course. The insurance company ended up putting them in production. Yeah, that's, that's a On uh, Fright Night, uh, working with like the special effects uh, with fangs and with blood and all yeah. that kind of stuff, I, I'm assuming that was a lot of fun to do. I don't know if you had done it before that. Oh, he had it easy. I didn't think. But, okay. um, well, and I talked with some folks here about it. You know, this was all practical effects. Yeah. This, this was no CGI. And now there seems to be this resurgence with uh, old school uh, coming back around. Because there is something about CGI that separates you from the action, that separates you from what's going on. And um, it's like you enter a video game or something. Uh, and we were the guinea pigs. And Richard Edlund's group, who designed the special effects for Fright Night, they were the sort of top at, uh, echelon. But there was this competition to outdo each other. And the humans were, <laughs> were the ones the who were having to, yeah. And, uh, but again, I'm not going to sweep the wheel. I finally had to one time because I had three different, you may know this story, three different contact lenses that I had to wear and you couldn't really see out of them because they were painted, you could have a little pinpoint. And, they, and I never wore lenses, so I, it was kind of alien for me to begin with. And the last pair they put in, I just was, and they would put them in right at the last minute before we'd start rolling and I just couldn't, you know, there was something going on, but you know, things are all coming in and it's getting ready to go. You do not want to be the one that says, excuse me, but I finally had to do that. And they took them out and they hadn't sanded them. They hadn't sanded the paint off the back of the lens, so they were literally scratching my eyes, and that wasn't good. Uh, but again, it's it's all in the excitement of the filmmaking process. Uh, my big mouth thing on Fright Night was a very last minute decision. They turned that around within 48 hours, and uh, it was an effective moment, it turns out. Uh, I've got a question for both of you. For Fright Night, uh, what was your best part of the movie The Shoot? I love hanging out with Billy. Wow. The best part, besides kissing. kissing. Yeah, right. Um, uh, uh, Did you I, have a favorite? I, I have a picture at my table who have been purchased. Uh, no, about the, the one, uh, the day that we were all together, yeah. we had gone over to, the, uh, I go over with Roddy and, and, and Amy and uh, and to, to prove that Dan, which is not a vampire, we think the whole water, right? Okay. So, and so we were all together that day. There it is, right there. He's got it right back. Okay. Um, and that was one, I mean, it was only a day or maybe two that we were all together the same set with the whole cast. Bad and thing. Very bad. Thing. And, uh, no, the director, he, he tell that story. He what? got mad. Did he? Yes, that we were cutting oh, up a little bit. Oh, they were Had a little too much fun. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't remember that. Oh, so yeah. I just yelled at them. But, uh, but yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Because we had already sort of, that was late in the shoot. And, uh, you know, we had already sort of formed friendships and stuff. And that was great that we all got be around together that day. Sorry, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, for Night, that early in your careers, was it, uh, I can't wait to do this as a, a this, you know, horror movie uh, genre, or is it like, oh my god, I got a job, I can't wait to, to, to <laughs> pay, you know, kind of thing? I think it's first the job. Okay. Yeah. Um, and ironically, I had been making a, my first feature um, that year uh, was with Stephen Jeffries. Really memorable film called Fraternity Vacation. Don't know if you get it. Anyway, we, he was the lead, and we played um, boyfriend girlfriend. And we're hanging out on the set at the end of the shoot, going, and Stephen's very Stephen. And I said, So what are you up to? What are you, you know, what's anything coming up? And he said, Well, I 
I made in this little horror movie called Fright Night. I said, me too. <laughs> so that was kind of strange and wonderful um, that we, we really truly rolled right into that next job. Yeah, I was, yeah, it was, uh, I, I remember getting the script on the front of the script. It had the Columbia Pictures uh, logo, you know, the throne of the woman. And I, that, was, that was enough for me. It was like, hey, look, I got a real script for a real movie. And uh, yeah, so getting it was awesome. But in the day, it was the horror that was the star. And even though we were fortunate enough to have, first of all, a beautifully written script and two really fine actors in Roddy and Chris who had, you know, quite a, a resume behind them. It was still looked at as a horror movie. Um, it was a major movie, but it did, you know, that, that too has changed. Yeah. And yeah. it all has to do with franchise and how much money they make and all, and all of that. And also the fact that they're good movies, right? So. Yeah, and I, I would go to auditions and stuff and casting people and, would, you know, you know, mention Fright Night and stuff. They said, "Well, I, I don't, I don't see movies like that." <laughs> so when the casting people were going to sort of, you know, uh, get to know and all that stuff, say they, they haven't seen it and they're not going to. It's you know, it's a, just because it's a horror movie, it's frustrating. I just want to come back to something you said uh, later. Um, when you did Fright Night, you never thought that you were going to do something that would become a classic, right? When is the time you realized that this was a huge movie for the Really, probably around this universe. Yeah. Yeah. Truly, because it was 20 years later, 2005, right? Somewhere. Mine was 2009. We've had this discussion. Okay. Right. Like you guys came to it before I did. Um, yeah, and it, I was surprised. It's like, what? Yeah, I mean, there's it was an interest in it. It was a modestly well received movie initially, and you know, and that was fine. And then, but it was this, it was the first of many that was going to come, as far as we were concerned, I think. And and uh, and it wasn't until we started getting into the convention world, and people, you know, with their children and their grandchildren showing up, being a fan of the movie, and that we thought, oh, this thing is, this is more yeah, than. you all that have kept in yeah, mind. Yeah, it's the you all fans. are the popular culture, too. And and we just kind of sit back and go, what? That's cool. Like, <laughs> you know, um, and the two things, because I've been behind the camera for so many decades, the two things that I've known for as an actor ended up being these cold classic things. And I'm lucky that I go and talk to people about that part of my career. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have a follow-up question on this. Um, with that trend um, for reboots uh, mixed with sequels, would something like, let's just say, Fright Night 2.5 instead of Fright Night 3 or whatever with reboots, would you accept a role for this Fright Night? Oh, just fine. Well, yeah. yeah, they did do, and Chris Sarandon puts it well, a reimagining of Fright Night with Colin Farrell and Tony Collette and you know, David Tennant. It, and as a standalone horror movie, I thought it was good. It, it was not the same um, sort of energy behind the original one. Um, again, it's kind of hard to capture an era like the 80s, you know, 30 years later. Um, so they did do what they called the remake. Um, but a lot of fans of the first two uh, didn't care for it because of that, because they didn't feel like it it, it really was remade. Right. Um, but, oh, of course, Tom has written a book. Yeah, Tom, the original writer-director, has written a couple of novels about it. So uh, one, I can't remember the first one, but the second one, which is out and available, uh, but there's a second called Billy's Bones, which is about Billy Cole, who you know turns into, you know, decomposes uh, at the end of the movie, but apparently survives somehow too. So it's based on. Tom that. didn't even know what he was because it's like, what is he a ghoul or what is he a zombie? He's like, I don't know. What are the rules? I don't know. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we're 
we're getting to the end of our time, but uh, I uh, wanted to ask one last question. Marcy Rhodes or Marcy Darcy? <laughs> um, I love working with David Harrison. Yeah. He's a tremendous actor and still a good friend. I saw him the other night. And uh, you know, Ted's a different kind of actor, it was a different kind of character. Um, we were already kind of, we've gone from, the original show had a lot more with, I mean, the first season or two was the Bundys and the, the next door neighbors. And then the kids grew up, and Chrissy was always a fine actor, but they could write more towards the kids, and, and it really was about the Bundy family, and, and we were, the neighbors were sort of this appendage. Um, so David and I got to do more, really, in terms of storyline. That was part of the fun. And then by the time Ted came along, the show was so baboonish, it was so cartoonish. And, and that's sort of where that landed. But I, I actually, I, although the name Marcy Darcy is pretty, <laughs> yeah. fabulous, excuse me, pretty fabulous. Um, yeah, Marcy Rose. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And he left me. Really? <laughs> so, did you have to do it that way? Was, was he, did he, and then was he decided he wanted to come back. Else? Why did he leave the show? That's a story. I will say that, here's for, the, for publication, he was, he's a New York guy, he's not an LA guy. And he was the only character that was written for him. None of, you know, everyone else was cast into it. The character of Steve was written for David, because he had done a show called It's Your Move, with these creators with uh, Jason Bateman's first okay. series. So they loved David and wrote the part for him. David was just not happy with the way the show was evolving and he was ready, he was itching to get back to Broadway. And uh, there you go. Yeah. Any other uh, questions, any other? Uh... Thanks for having us. That's great, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.